you gotta own up to when you mess up. And that's what I'm doing right now. So there it is. Oh my God. There it is right there, guys. Look at that. And it's sitting right there on what I think is the manifold. And I got my family riding around in this piece of shit. Oh man, that's so bootleg, man. That is so bootleg, man. Now y'all know I keep it as honest as I can with y'all when it comes down to my experiences here with my system. I just got the biggest scare of my car out of your life a moment ago. Now what you're seeing down here, that green light, is my um, Bluetooth capacitor right there. That's a super cap. A lot of power. That thing can, that thing can melt wrenches and metal. Right here you got a 300 amp fuse. You got two of them because I got dual runs of 4 gauge. But let me show you guys what I just noticed under the hood. In my hands right here, I have two mini, these are a and &L fuses. These are mini a and &L fuses because of the type of fuse holder that I have. I got those incorporated without the, with, within the, uh, my build, throughout my build. Okay, let me show you guys something. Let's go around here. This is the front of the car. Let me get my glasses. All right, so this is the negative. This is the positive. This goes straight to the alternator. This guy here runs to the back. As you can tell, let's follow that lead. Here go the fuse block again, right? So you got that same setup. I just took these two out of here. Okay, they hook. They hook in like this. And then they just, they just slant, they latch closed like that. I'm not going to connect that. I'm going to tell you guys why. It's freaking me out. It's freaking me out right now, man. It's, this wire runs to the rear of the car. Okay? It runs to my amplifier. It goes about three foot down into the engine. Then it goes through the, wire, the firewall, through a grommet. I'll show you guys where it goes. That wire feeds into here. But that wire up front, before it goes into the firewall, the insulation is completely shredded off of it. So damn dangerous, man. It scared me so bad. And it's still freaking me out because it's still connected to my my super capacitor. But this wire right here is completely exposed before it goes into my firewall. When I do it, when I did my installation, I didn't have enough wire loom. So I just left stuff exposed like this. This is this is a rookie move, man. I put thousands of miles on this thing with my family since then. And um got me feeling real bad about it. So I gotta make some some more purchases, man, to kind of upgrade the safety of this vehicle and this definitely has to go. All this has to go. Everything is going to get full upgrade. Uh, but uh, let me let me pull this apart. But well, first, let me get this disconnected back here. The first thing to do is to disconnect this thing from the supercapacitor. So I'm going to have to um, take all this stuff off because I think this thing has like over 5,000 farads or something. It's crazy. It's something crazy on this supercapacitor. Right now, I can't even think. Because it, it really freak it's really freaking me out right now, man. Uh, that that I have this thing, uh, pretty much neglected my system. I could have I could have burned this. I could have not only damaged the car, but I could have hurt my family. So uh, I guess this is going to be the uh, video on the importance of proper wiring, man, and, and securing your wires. So uh, let me stop yapping and just get this out so you guys can see what I'm working with up in here. All right, guys, so what you see now, I got my uh, my toolbox here uh, propping up this false wall that I had with my amplifiers mounted to. Now, if you guys are wondering about this material, this is very thin material, but this stuff is strong. 
This is the material that they make uh, whiteboards with. And I found it to be very, very easy to manipulate. But it's very, it's very strong stuff. You know, it's, it looks flimsy, kind of like aluminum. You can bend and flex it. But as far as the rigidity, the rigidity of it when you're screwing into it, it's very strong stuff. And if you're wondering how I'm securing it to the wall here, this carpet, all this stuff pulls out. Um, behind this carpeted piece here, this molded piece here, it, like I said, it exposes the metal behind it. I tapped that metal sheathing with a piece of, with a sheet of um, three quarter inch MDF, you know, and that's what I screw into with this false wall. So I put my, amp I, I mount my amplifiers to it and I screw it into that wall. It hits that MDF that I have behind the, um, the carpet right here. So, but anyway, I'll show you all this stuff later. Okay, as you guys can see, I have a uh, bucket right here holding up this false wall. And this false wall, I have my amplifiers and stuff on it. I need to get to this, this fusing here. Actually, I need to take off. I need to take this, this positive coming from the front to take that off. It need to be completely isolated from the rest of the system because it's grounded out. It, it's, it's a damaged wire up there. It needs to come off. So I'm going to be removing this. I think this is like a 15 or a 14 uh, millimeter net. I'm going to be taking that off. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Yeah, I'm still freaking out a little bit about that wire, man. So I'm just going to go ahead and just get these guys taken off here. As you guys can see, I had already gotten that guy loose a bit. And I'm just going to show you guys how these fuses work in case you hadn't seen that. When I loosen this one, it should just swing down and disconnect. Just like that. I didn't. I mean, I didn't want it to do that, but... <laughs> That's what that's how it does, right? So let me take this and make sure this wire don't go do nothing crazy. So like that. Now it's disconnected from the super cap. Okay. I keep saying super cap, but it's actually an ultra cap. It it is it, it has super caps or super capacitors inside of it. Um, but anyway, so let me get this off here. I don't want to shorten that now. And I'm just going to do the same thing with the other ones over here. Oh, this is running off the positive. This is this is the actual wire that's damaged under the hood. So it come, before it goes into the super cap, it's, it's uh, fused. Okay, you got, got it fused. Then it connects to the super cap. And then the two amplifiers run off of it. These two right here go to the amplifiers. And of course, coming out of the cap, you want them fused before they even go to your amplifier. And that's the proper way of fusing it. So once again, coming from the front, before it goes into the, the supercapacitor, you want it fused before it goes in. And after it comes out going to your amplifier, you want to fuse it within a foot of coming out of the, uh, your battery, your, your, your power source. It can be a battery, it can be a capacitor, it can be a, a bank of lithium cells, it, does, it doesn't really matter. It can be a, com it can be a converter. You know, you just want it to be fused when it's coming out of your power source. Okay, as you guys can see, all those fuses have been removed. Once again, this is coming from up front into the, capa into the capacitor, coming out of the capacitor to the amplifiers. They are also, I'm sorry, for amplifier one, amplifier two is also fusing. So the amplifiers are not receiving any power right now. So I can go ahead and start removing them now if I wanted to but what I want to do now is get this wire here um, off of here as well even though it's the, the the wire in question is definitely isolated now it's not connected to any power source so I can go ahead and start uh, pulling it out it, it looks bad guys I mean it, it looks real bad it makes me <clears throat> it gives me the jitters that that I left that like that man I really I really feel bad about it because I know some of you guys man y'all rely on us uh, influences to kind of like you know get a clear picture on what direction to go with this stuff and for me to have mine looking like that 
you gotta own up to when you mess up. And that's what I'm doing right now. So now that this run of cable is completely isolated, it's not connected to any power source right now. It's just pretty much abandoned in the middle of the car. I can start pulling it in through the grommet down below. Or maybe it's picking up and I just don't realize that it is. I hope it, I really hope when I go back to edit this that you guys are able to see what it is that I'm seeing because it looks bad. What it's seeing. Okay, that's the wire right there. There it is. Oh my God. There it is right there, guys. Look at that. And it's sitting right there on what I think is the manifold. That looks so bad, man. Oh my God. That looks so bad. Look at that, man. And I got my family riding around in this piece of sh**. You see that? Oh man, that's so bootleg, man. That is so bootleg, man. Yeah, now you guys see what I was talking about. I jacked up, man, I messed up bad. But hey, good thing it was caught. Your boy D got some wiring issues to take care of, and that's what I'm gonna be doing in the upcoming videos. Stay tuned, guys. Now guys, before you go to working on your vehicle, always disconnect this negative cable right here, always. I didn't do that because I've already taken all these fuses out. You're still supposed to. So just, just know that the wire I showed you guys earlier that was attached here to this positive right here, I take it off. Okay, that's what you guys didn't just see. I use a 13 millimeter hex to get that, I mean, uh, 13 millimeter to get that off. Now this thing here is just free floating for me to completely disconnect. And that's, that's kind of what you want right now. So this run of wire is disconnected at the rear and now it's disconnected under here and it's safe for removal now. So I'm gonna get a Phillips and take all this stuff out and we'll examine the wire once I pull it through the firewall. All right, so this thing is now pulled off of here. And yeah, man, it, it, the lugs and stuff seem to be still like, they still seem to be in good shape. Nothing looks burned or anything like that. So, and this is my, my marine grade wire as well. It has tin uh, coating on it. So yeah, pretty good stuff. I'm gonna be able to recycle that for another project sometime in the future, but for right now, Let's go ahead and get this thing disconnected because it's um, freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll get this thing going again. Oh man, it's trying to rain, man. Every time I get out here to do a project, it starts raining every single time. Let me hurry up. And in case you guys are wondering a good factory location for your grommet when running your power wire, in these impalas there's an actual uh, I don't want let me get this carpet for my knees man I'm, I'm on concrete down here so man, I need to clean this car out so I just got off a 1400 mile road trip guys so please excuse that mess so there is a uh, grommet underneath this carpet if I can pull it back, this is where the wires actually ran under here, and there's the grommet right there behind the center console. If you guys can appreciate that, there's a grommet right there you can run your wire through. Oh, no, it's not as hard as I thought, but man, look at that, guys. Look at that. Can you believe this? Man, I was rolling like this for months, man. Almost over. I don't even know how long I had it in here, but 
I don't even know when this happened. I don't know. Maybe some. Maybe I ran over something and hit the wire. I don't even know what happened here, man. But look at this, man. Golly. But hey, let's keep going with it. That's it. That's that's it. Now I can pull. <sighs> now I can pull all this stuff out, man. This thing, this this get me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> This this really freaks me out, man. It does. It it, it really does. Because this is some highly conductive wire. And I don't know how long it's been exposed like this, man. Anyway, let me let me get this stuff out of here. As you guys can see, I've already removed the audio pipe APM in 2000s from the trunk. I will later on be replacing them with the Tariams MD8000.1s. These amplifiers should give me the overhead that I need in order to combat the impedance rise in my system. If you guys haven't seen the previous video that I did on impedance rise, go check that one out. Because that video shows you that I was getting seven times the ohm low rating that I was wired to. Impedance rise is a system killer and you got to know how to combat it. I really want to thank you guys for giving me all the tips on different wiring um, that I could have done to uh, combat the impedance rise, but I think this here will be a more natural um, solution to it. Anyway, this video is about the dangers of bad wiring. So what exactly could I have done in order to combat the issue that I just had? Come to find out the solution is very, very simple. This stuff. Good old-fashioned wire loan. This stuff is cheap. It can be a bit difficult to work with, but man, it's way more rewarding than seeing shredded wiring underneath your hood. That stuff can burn your car up with you inside of it, or catch fire when you're sleeping and burn your house down with you inside of it and your family. So don't do that, guys. You guys want to see what brand exactly I have? I picked this guy up over at Amazon. And there's the manufacturer's name and product number. This is three quarter inch and I did pick up 50 foot of it and it comes with a warning. Please heed the warnings. So, you guys don't want this happening to your system. It's something as simple as this. And for the guys who want to go a little bit more fancier than this, They have this stuff. This is the split loom. Well, the other one is split loom too, but this one here is a bit more, you know, fancier. It actually comes in different colors. A lot of people are turning to this nowadays more so than the old-fashioned one I just showed you. I think it feels good in the hand. And it did come with a few instructions you guys may want to check out as well. But who knows? I'll give you guys a shot at that. It comes from the same place, pretty much. And there's the manufacturing number that you may may want to use. It also comes with some instructions here on the back and an email in case you have questions. I don't know this person. They didn't endorse me. I spent my own money on this stuff. But everybody says it's pretty good stuff, so I'm sharing it with you guys. But anyway, hopefully you can prevent your system from going through something like this. This is horrible. <laughs> I got an upcoming video on the new wiring that I have. Hopefully that'll be more suitable. It's one gauge. It's one out, actually. One out, zero gauge. And it's also marine grade wire, so it has the, the tin coating on it to help against corrosion. But unlike this build that I just did, it's definitely going to be getting a healthy dose for this stuff. So until next time, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the comments and tips. Until next time. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here and I'm out.